Episode 3 of The Queen's Gambit. Beth is taking part in another tournament. In this position, she has black. A nice tactic here to win the game in one move. Notice white's king is on e3. There's a bishop indirectly pointing at the king. But at the moment, there is a knight in the way. So pause the video. Can you find a really good knight move? The knight gets out of the way and then it will be a devastating check. I will give you five seconds. Not only can we move the knight out of the way, but we can capture a piece as well. So knight takes e2, check. So this is a discovered check from the bishop on h6. In episode three, her opponent resigned. Because if you take the knight, then it is checkmate in one move. Notice here, all the squares covered. That square is covered by this pawn. This square and this square covered by the rook. This square covered by the bishop. White has pieces on the back blocking him going backwards and it looks like this is the only square not covered but black now throws in rook d2 check mate because now this rook covers this square and here white cannot move anywhere checkmate still in episode 3 we are in Las Vegas 1966 Harmon plays Benny Watts let's go through the final position this is Beth Harmon against Benny Watts. Benny has the black pieces and here he played rook h2. This is a great move because now we have a rook and a bishop attacking the knight. And at the moment there's only a rook defending it. Here Beth played king f2. And here, pause the video, can you find a winning move? Which led to Beth resigning. This is called a fork. This is where you attack two pieces at the same time. I'll give you five seconds. The king is now on f2, but the rook is on a clumsy square, allowing knight d3 check. And here, in the episode, Beth resigned, and Benny Watts won the championship. This is called a fork. The king and rook can both be attacked at the same time, Knight d3 check played. After the king moves, then you are just gonna lose a rook. Now here you can take, but then your knight will drop. And in this position, black is winning because black has an extra rook. Benny Watts wins this tournament. Later on in the show, they will meet again. Beth has white and has a dominating position. She is on board four, so she's making her way up to board one very soon. Beth has just played d7, and black now has to play rook d8, or else white is just going to get a queen. In this position, there's a very nice checkmating pattern. It is checkmate in three moves. This bishop is so strong, but it's time to get rid of it, clear the path. So the first move is bishop takes rook. Bishop takes bishop, and now... Time to get the queen into the game with queen h6 check. And already this is just looking so dangerous. Black can block with the bishop. Black now only has one square for the king to escape to, which is e7. So checkmate in one move. White now swings the queen over to d6. And that is a really nice checkmate. All squares covered. E8 is covered by the pawn. This G8 square is covered by the bishop. After Queen H6 check, maybe the king could escape, but it leads to checkmate as well. We'll go Queen H7 check. The king can only go back. And now checkmate in one move, Queen F7. This is a good pattern to remember. The queen is directly opposite the king. When this happens, it doesn't really matter what is protecting the white queen. It can be any piece. It's really one of the first checkmating patterns you learn. Queen opposite king, anything protects the queen and that is checkmate. So Beth wins this game. Beth is now on board three. She has the white pieces 
and in this position, she is completely winning. One reason that she's completely winning is because black has no pawns in front of his king, but notice, white has three pawns. So there is protection for white. Also, white has so many pieces around the king. When we're thinking about attacking, it's good to think of the rule of three. So if you have three pieces near your opponent's king, then it is a good chance for you to generate an attack. White has three to four pieces. Black only has one defender here. Also, black's pieces are not so well placed. This queen, it is attacking this pawn defended by the king, it's also attacking this one. This rook isn't actually doing too good a job because it cannot check the king because there's a bishop here. White to move and checkmate in two moves. I'll give you five seconds. The winning move is queen f7 check. The king has to go to h8 or to h7, it can't go here. So wherever the king goes, it doesn't matter. The next move will be the same. You're gonna take the bishop. And just like before, we have this pattern. The first checkmate pattern that you will learn. You put the queen opposite the king, and as long as you have something defending it, then it is checkmate. Here, you have a rook. So Beth Harmon wins on board three, moving up the tournament. Beth now has the black pieces, and she has a winning endgame. So let's just see how this could have played out. In this position, it's white's move, and white played rook a4, which looks like a good move, because if rook takes d6, then rook takes a7, and even though it looks like black is winning, two rooks against a rook and a bishop, white does have an a pawn, this can be very difficult to win. So Beth plays a really good move. After rook a4, you don't take this pawn yet because this pawn is a goner. In the episode, we can see rook b8 being played, which is a very accurate move. Here the scene ends, but the reason this is such a good move is because Beth is gonna play rook to b6. Then use the rook here to take this. Now, why is that important? Because then, this rook still keeps an eye on this pawn. Black wants to keep his A pawn on the board to retain winning chances. So after rook b8, the scene ends, but I just wanna show you how this game could continue. By the way, bishop g4 doesn't work. You may be thinking, ah, if rook d6, rook a7. But the point is black can block the bishop. The bishop goes back and then rook b6. So rook b8, maybe white can get the king in, or white can push, doesn't matter too much. Maybe h5, you can go king g7, take take, maybe king f1, rook b6, king e2, and now rook d6. And here, black is winning. Black has a rook for bishop, and at the highest level, black can win this.